Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on natural farming, uh, rare tropical fruit trees, midwinter mango fruit and flower, and midwinter jackfruit flower and fruit. So it's winter solstice today. I'm standing in front of my miniature zebus. This is our little miniature zebu bull. This is the source of our fertility here at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And this little bull is uh, gonna be four years old soon. And he's 32 <coughs> inches tall, super sweet. There's my little girl, Pepsi. Uh, she's about 33 inches. And there's Romy and Carnation. And then we have uh, Bogle Farms Luna inside there. She's like a red and black speckled cow. Uh, Carna uh, Bogle Farms Uma is Pepsi. She's uh, she's so sweet. She's my little princess. Anyway, <laughs> that's that's our farm fertility. That's like a daily supply of man <clears throat> manure. I just uh, drop <clears throat> drop there around these mangoes. Uh, these particular mangoes are a little too close to the cow manure and there's rules against selling fruit to the public uh, when you apply raw manure. And so I've experimented with these mangoes and the amount of manure I give them. So I've given them extra since I really can't sell these tr fruit to the public. Though the public does uh, eat them. Um, uh, I tell them where they come from and, and they still want them, but you have to wait 120 days after applying manure uh before you can sell tropical fruit trees so uh or fruit to the uh, public for human consumption because they're worried about e coli but that's the reason why they have e coli in their systems is because they allow for the mismanagement of cows uh, and animals in large feedlots and large pens which creates super amounts of uh, huge piles or huge lagoons of manure which harbor E. coli. So their uh, natural farm system is out of balance. It's totally unnatural. So this is a fruit punch mango and this tree is covered in little fruitlets and flowers and larger size fruit. Even the part that uh, flower fruited is reflowered again and is um, giving me more fruit. So I think it's gonna be a very good year for this tree on uh, uh, fruit production. And this is, a, uh, I think, a five-year-old fruit punch tree. It's not the biggest fruit punch tree we have, um, but we do not water anything. And this tree produces a lot of fruit. Last year, this tree did have powdery mildew. Powdery mildew does not affect fruit set for us here. Uh, it has not been a problem, but as you can see this year, there's no powdery mildew. And this is a sweet tart mango that's just starting to, uh, flower. Quite excited about this year's, uh, mango crop. It looks like it's going to be a very good year for mangoes. Um, very early. We've never had mangoes flowering in November before. We actually have had mangoes with fruit or flower uh, all 12 months of the year this year, or 2023. So we had fruit in November, we had or flowers, or we had fruit in October, we had flowers in October, or in November. So every single uh, month had fruit or flowers. It's a year-round event now, I guess. And that's because we grow naturally. So we naturally farm mangoes. We do not water them. They've never been watered. We've never connected any of our mangoes to water. I do not water them when I plant them. And um, this is a Venus mango and it's got uh, swelling buds. It's got flowers on it and it's got fruit on it. And it's doing very well. The lychees are looking good. So when you naturally farm, which they have never studied, uh, the plant's phenotype, natural phenotype, so it's natural uh, growing conditions uh, can be expressed. Uh, and here in Florida, they don't really study that. They just, 
um, have farm management practices that only focus on monocrops, not biodiverse, uh, multi-species, uh, fruit tree, uh, food forest, uh, like we are doing here. This is a mango. I'm not really sure who it is, but it's got, um, it's starting to, uh, swell. This particular tree had not bloom or fruited before. I don't think it even bloomed before, but uh, I'm not sure why that is, but it's very healthy. It's just a, gonna be four years old this in January. This is a, it looks like it's gonna do a super bloom. This is a, a coconut cream mango that always produces well. Uh, this is a <clears throat> buttercream mango. <coughs> Buttercream was has produced three separate crops for us in 2023, uh, and it actually had a fruit on it on, in October, and then uh, flowered is the tree that had the fruit in October flowered in November, so started flowering in November of this year. So it's like uh, three crops and then uh, flower this, as soon as the fruit comes off. It's just really amazing. And um, it's because of the healthy conditions of our soil. So we focus on soil health. That's like the base principle we focus on here. And we've been doing it for years and we only apply natural inputs, manure inputs. This is a, a honey kiss mango looking good. This is a uh, peach cobbler mango, looking great. This tree is gonna be four years old in uh, January. It's raining a little bit, huh, nice. And uh, it's uh, getting ready to uh, bloom. I don't see any panicles on it yet. This is a big uh, fruiting koi muk tree that doesn't have any flowers on it at the moment, but I'm sure it is. This is another fruit punch tree. This is the same age tree as the other one. It's a lot bigger tree. Um, I think it was more compacted in that other area. So compaction is a big uh, deterrent for a true uh, fruit tree's uh, phenotype to be or genotype to be expressed. I think I said phenotype when I should have said genotype. Genotype is the natural uh, uh, expression of the fruit tree. And phenotype is when the environment dictates it, the, the trees, uh, how it grows due to uh, like compaction or water or fertilizer. So you're, it doesn't express itself naturally. <clears throat> Anyway, I clarified that, I guess. Uh, this fruit punch tree is covered in flower. Um, I don't see any fruit set on it yet. It's a little bit later than the other one, but it's doing a complete bloom. It's a beautiful tree. And this is a, uh, a, 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 a Venus mango that has got so much fruit on it. And I'll go around and look at it. This is a uh, sugarloaf mango that's got partial bloom, but it's also starting to bloom elsewhere. I don't really see a sugarloaf mango uh, has any fruit on it at the moment, but it's just now kind of doing its thing. It's quite exciting. This is a sweet tart mango that's like covered in fruit. Uh, or not fruit, but it's like star not covered. It's like got partial bloom and it's swelling. So it's getting ready to do a full big bloom. Now here's our jackfruit and jackfruit. I really didn't know that you could get ripe fruit in uh, midwinter. And this is a little grafted tree that is covered in flowers and covered in fruit for this little tiny tree. And I have not noticed where jackfruits are affected by drought, and I have not noticed where uh, mangoes are affected by drought. And if you're being affected by drought or um, or uh, uh, fungal diseases or parasites or any other disease that your fruit trees are getting, it's probably due to the compaction. I'm going to do some links on soil compaction and diseases and stuff uh, in my reference section. And, but um, when you, the studies are all done on like annual crops. So it's not really as compacted as the Florida, like say citrus industry where they mow everything and then they spray glyphosate around the, the tree. So that when it rains, 
it compacts it where there's no cover like this. And we don't walk on any of this area. We only walk on mowed paths. I do go in to the areas to harvest fruit and to plant and to, um, you know, do some maintenance sometimes or to make videos. But um, we don't walk on our system. We stay off of it. And uh, when you are mowing, there's that mango, the uh, sweet tart mango. This side's covered in in bloom or you know getting covered in bloom uh when you mow it over and over and over because they mow like weekly when it rains i've seen them on the citrus groves here uh it's mowed strips it basically creates uh cement bags of your soil so the uh so here's a, a venus mango it's got fruit it's got flower it's got little fruit up there Uh, it's going to be a good producing tree this year. This is a, 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 a sugarloaf mango that had a lot of bloom on it early. And it rains came. It had a couple of little fruits over here, but it really didn't have a lot of fruit. But I see it's getting ready to give me a, a, a whole new bloom. So it's reblooming. Um, it's going to rebloom on the areas where it's already bloomed. So. Uh, we're gonna get fruit on that tree. Uh, it hasn't really been the best producer in my sugar loaves. I mean, we got some fruit on it, but we have multiple trees of uh, each of the varieties. Like, I think I had 25 sugar loaf mangoes, but unfortunately, the sugar loaf mangoes were the hardest hit from the freeze because um, uh, they were so small. This is our vegetable garden. Um, I just haven't been into the vegetables. Dry farm vegetables, naturally grown vegetables. This is a diamond mango. I like diamond mango. It, it, it produces three crops a year. So when the soil is compacted and driven on over and over and over again, none of the nutrient cycles can work correctly. And then they apply all these nutrients like uh, nitrogen and stuff, um, which none of it can absorb into the soil when you have compacted soil. So most of it just runs off and goes into the waterways in Florida. This is a Venus mango that's just starting to flower. This is an M4 mango that's starting to flower. Somebody told me that their M4 produces well. This is like, um, it's fourth year. It's not the biggest four-year-old mango. Um, that's compaction. Compaction does that. This was a lawn for 50 years and the back was a horse pasture for 50 years. So that's heavily compacted from horses hooves. And um, <clears throat> so when you have compaction and you're using nutrients and there's no biodiversity in the soil. So it's a totally anti soil health uh, farm management practice when you're mowing and you're using doing a monocrop uh so you, you're not having the biology in the soil and the my uh, the mycorrhizal fungi uh that colonize the roots that are able to um provide nutrients for your plant that uh can enable the plant to uh elicit a defense response aren't able to happen the natural processes because everything's compacted and the soil pH is all wrong for your plants. And that's why they have to add lime in Florida, gypsum. Uh, to, they say it's to sweeten the mangoes. Well, we're on calcareous rock in Florida. So that just statement just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, they mine gypsum here in Florida. So it just, it just is so illogical to even uh, tell people that they need to apply gypsum when in, in the reason why is because your tree can't cycle calcium correctly because the soil's compacted because of the unnatural conditions that you're farming in. That's why we farm naturally. So this is a J31 jackfruit and I came by it. I had given it a daily manure um, this not that long ago when I did the mangoes in the back and this tree is not flowered or fruited before for us. And I keep waiting for it to flower. And I know that if I tied my bowl up to the little tree that it, the jackfruits would flower. 
And look, I got flowers on my J31. I had a J33 jackfruit that um, I, it got killed because of compaction uh, from the compacted soil from this being a lawn. I continued uh, it as a lawn for two years after purchasing it. I did lawn and wood chips before I evolved into a natural forest system like this. The, forest farming of a uh, biodiverse range of fruit trees. Uh, and um, when I see people that say they grow organically growing um, fruit trees, there's little cashew seedlings. And I see a mowed lawn and I don't see like any like logs or uh, they don't talk about what they're doing for fertilizer. I just know that they don't know what they're doing or don't really truly understand what it is to be organic. Cause I do know that um, organic in Florida, you have to utilize all the regenerative farming modalities. In other words, you have to um, look for inspiration from Indian zero budget natural farming. You have to look for to inspiration from biodynamic farming. You have to look for inspiration from permaculture. You have to look for inspiration from Korean natural farming. These are all uh, uh, lychee, lychee. This is our Miko lemons, Miko lemons. This is a, a Valkyrie mango. And you have to look at uh, other indigenous farming methods and not mimic them identically, but at least uh, assimilate aspects of their modalities, the natural farming modalities, uh, Korean natural farming, Japanese natural farming, um, into a, a farm plan that uh, more resembles uh, nature. Otherwise, you it's not i know that you're not you don't really understand organic uh farming uh completely in florida because on sand it's impossible i think to get fruit production um organically with a mowed lawn and that's why that's why they said they used to say that you cannot grow organically in florida that's i mean that's what they told me when I first started, this is a huge cashew tree and it's looking quite well. So this is another, this is a seedling jackfruit. And I was walking by this tree the other day and I'm hoping to see it again, but it had a flower on it. And I was like, oh my God, I got flowers on all my cashew trees. And here it is midwinter. I'm not cashew trees, jackfruit trees, sorry. Um, and it just really surprised me. I was like, whoa, but now I can't seem to see the, the flower on this tree. Where is it? Hello. I'm not sure what uh, variety this is, but I'm thinking it's a small fruited variety um, because the leaves are kind of small. And um, where is it? There it is. Yes, fruit. I got fruit. It's kind of a little tree. It's only, uh, I mean, it's a tiny little tree. Uh, but here it is, flowering and fruiting midwinter uh, under these natural farming uh, methods that we uh, incorporate. Uh, multiple regenerative uh, holistic farm practices into our Florida natural farming methods here. It works. And all these plants that they say compete with your um, trees, I'm gonna go look at some more cashew trees. Um, it's just, it's just not true. It's like uh, at our entrance, we have two palm trees I planted at the same time. One has two in the hole and one has one in the hole. They were the same size, this from the same source planted on opposite sides of the driveway and never been given water. And the one that has two trees in the, in the hole is like 20 times the size of the one that only has one tree in the hole. So there's not competition going on. Really the only competition going on is uh, dogma, learned dogma 
on from like I hate to say it but from ag schools on how to grow and fruit trees and <clears throat> the whole problems with disease in your fruit trees which I said earlier is because the nutrient cycles are not working correctly uh, due to compaction due to management of the orchard floor so we have some little jackfruits over here and little seedlings that I planted not that long ago. I'm trying to see where they're at. Uh, I know they're here. Oh, here. <clears throat> There's one. It's from manage mismanagement of the orchard floor. And you don't need to spray copper on your mangoes uh, if you like focus on soil health. It's my in my like i think february video uh 2023 my monthly farm update february 20th i think is what it was i'm i dated all my uh videos for 2023 in the title except for on the the uh on the monthly farm updates so i did one once a month and uh on the february video you can clearly see the first mangoes i showed in this video the venus mango the fruit punch mango were covered in in powdery mildew last year and if i had sprayed copper on them chances are this year they would be affected by powdery mildew again but the powdery mildew i did not spray copper i People think that just because stuff is OMRI approved, so the Organic uh, Materials uh, Review Institute of what's approved for organic use, just because a copper substance is in there does not mean that it's approved for organic use and it's uh, it, you should use it. Um, you, if you look at the fine print, it says you have to get permission to use on organic certified farms. So, and then you can only use it like twice a year. This is a... Uh, a chumpadak mango, uh, jackfruit uh, cross with a chumpadak uh, uh, cross with a jackfruit. Um, so, but people don't look at the fine print. And um, when you use that copper and you take the job away from the tree and you have compacted soil so that you don't have the biology in the soil, then your tree's ability to, or need to form a, a, a chemical, phytochemical response uh, to, to combat powdery mildew and attract a, a plant, plant beneficial fungi uh, is compromised. So your immune system of your plant is compromised when you're using copper sprays and stuff like that. And they have been shown to cause cognitive decline in children and in adults. Here's a, a jackfruit seedling from that tree in the back I showed you. <clears throat> uh, everything's connected. And if you're mowing and you've got compacted soil and you put wood chips down over it and you don't have living roots in the ground, um, chances are your soil is still compacted under those wood chips. And just because the, the wood chips break down into uh, compost doesn't mean that is building soil. That's just compost. And if it's compost sitting on top of the, the ground, it's sure it does some good, but most of it goes up in the air because the nutrients can't be absorbed into the ground. But if you have the living root from the living orchard floor, and it doesn't even have to resemble this. This is just what nature put there. And I've slowly been planting my plants into it, which is why this now looks like this. There's uh, encephalardos and um, bromeliads and cacti and apuntia. And um, I got a little uh, alasapo tree over here that I've been uh, patiently watching. Uh, grow slowly right there it's still hanging in there um, but I have lots of uh, encephalardos in here this is uh, encephalardos horridus uh, I buy them when they're a little tiny and put them in here and then I divide these heliconias hummingbirds really love or not heliconias bromeliads 
Hummingbirds really love bromeliads. And when we moved here, there wasn't all this life. There wasn't all these birds. And there was just like fire ants and mowed lawn. And it was kind of like a, 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 a green desert, basically. There wasn't raccoons. There wasn't like rabbits. There wasn't possums. There wasn't all these little songbirds and stuff. There wasn't uh, predatory birds. And it just was fire ants and lawn. And there was standing water everywhere. Every time it rained, there was big giant ponds of standing water, which killed my J33 jackfruit. So I'm like, I need to fix this. So I took a bunch of soil classes and figured out that, you know, the living orchard floor, the, the tall, the tall plants is what can start fixing and remediating compaction in, in, uh, in lawns. And so that's why it looks like this. And I didn't plant any of it. And it was all lawn. The uh, little bread nut trees are looking good. And now it pretty much can grow anything. And stuff grows really fast in here. And in fact, I just planted some uh, Lindero, uh, Garcinia Linderos. There's a Garcinia dulcis. We started this farm to be a, a Chacha Iro farm. And this Lindero is like huge. It's like 15 inches in just a few short months from seed. Uh, I've been planting my aeroids in here to uh, displace the weeds that everyone despises. This is a Telusia floresii uh, seedling right there. I got all kinds of stuff in here. I'm a plant hoarder like most of you. If you're watching, I'm sure you hoard tropical fruit trees. I don't collect uh, what most people collect, uh, jabata cabas and uh, stuff like that. I, I have some plinias. I, uh, I have... Uh, Plenty of inflata that grows naturally. Look at the cacao. I do collect and grow a lot of cacao, different types, three different types. Trinitoro, yellow rib, that fruit on that is yellow rib. Trin and this is a Trinitoro. And, and I have plenty of edulis. And a few, few uh, seeds started. I think I probably have some seedling uh, jabata cabas, but I haven't like searched them out or found them. Here's another uh, bread nut tree. Direct sown seeds, my durians looking great. Been unaffected by the cold, no no issues whatsoever. But look at how it's growing. And, and not watered. No need to water stuff. I was just shocked that they said you need to water jackfruit. Um, it's like well known to be a, a drought tolerant uh, large forest tree in India, but yet we do not look at any, any indigenous knowledge uh, here in the United States um, when uh, developing uh, ag agro systems to grow fruit trees. So even though the, the, uh, the indigenous people of India, they Hindus, Hindustan, um, had been growing jackfruit and uh, mango trees for thousands of years successfully. They developed them and grow them along with numerous other uh, trees of purpose, neem and you name it. This just came from India. It was just so many. It's just unbelievable. Uh, and uh, they do Indian zero budget natural farming. And that's why we, I got the miniature zebus and I love them. It was the best decision I ever made. They make stuff fruit. <clears throat> so I, if you watch my videos, you know that I wanted to, uh, I'm up to 390 divides on my bananas. I'm gonna get up to 400 by the first of the year for sure. I do five a day. Some days I'm not able to get them done. I have to go to the dentist this morning, so uh, um, that's an issue, but they're doing good. We got lots. I want to have bananas year round here. So you know that I've been tying my bowl up to this, my little uh, bowl, Romy, Pepsi's baby, uh, the little red bowl. He's uh, going to be a year old in January, I think 10th or 9th or something like that for the beginning of January soon. And he's like 26 inches tall. He's a tiny little guy, super sweet. And uh, I should be having him tied up right here. But this big giant seedling jackfruit had never flowered. And 
I was like, what is going on? I had given it a pile of manure and it still didn't do it. And I gave it a pile of manure here. It's all pretty much broken down. This is what it does. It just breaks down into this and it all gets used up. And it's still got hay there, you know. It just, nothing goes to waste. It's uh, amazing. It turns into compost in situ. So it, it composts in place. Um, I found that small compost piles, even if you don't have cows next to your fruit trees, probably are really good. And hay is an excellent uh, ingredient for those composts. And you can get grass, coastal Bermuda grass hay delivered to your house, a bale, or you know, like five bales. It's very inexpensive. You have to pay a delivery fee, call your local feed store. Um, organic, uh, certifiable in most instances. That they said that the coastal Bermuda hay, we used to be organic certified and biodynamic certified. That's why I do know a little bit about organic, growing organically, because I passed the certification first time on biodynamics and on organics being organic certified. So, uh, but anyway, the hay, you can get it delivered and then just do small piles around your tree or next to your tree and then dump like a cup of milk in it. You know, borrowed from Indian zero budget natural farming. You don't have to do the dogma exactly like everyone does it. There are no rules in nature. It all breaks down. Just It's a ma matter of getting the diversity in there. Throw some earthworm castings in there, a little cup of milk and some hay, and maybe some rice or some uh, wheat flour or some sourdough bread starter. Um, and then get some indigenous microorganisms from around the best tree you could you have growing in your yard and sprinkle that on top. And that's a great compost pile. So I, this tree is flowering and fruiting. <sighs> I'm dying to see what this tree is. I bought this tree or uh, it was a gift from somebody and it always struggled. And I'm like, I got to get this thing to fruit. So I had been tying my little bowl up to this orange crush grafted tree and it had never fruited and it was quite large. and. I had given it a pile of manure next to it and a pile of manure on that side because I wanted it to uh, a fruit and it still hadn't fruited. So then I started tying my bowl up to it, my little bowl, Romy, and I noticed that it started flowering everywhere. So we got flowers and fruit um, pretty much growing all over this tree. It's just... Uh, it just has it going on. It's uh, the, the leaves look really happy, uh, never watered, uh, just totally dry farm, growing naturally, um, focused on soil health. So there's my little uh, Garcinia madruna tree that uh, I put a pile of manure next to because when trees fruit, I dump a daily manure next to them just because that's been shown to by me to encourage uh, fruit production for the next right away, especially on that Garcinia madruna, which is fruits nonstop. So I had a banana uh, tree here that uh, fell over and it had a rack on it. So I cut the, it was too small, but this is an orange crush uh, jackfruit. And I saw a fruit on this one too. It's a small, smallish tree, but I know that it had uh, flowers on it. I'm trying to see the flower now. And um, I don't see it. But anyway, I know it does. So this one's flowering also. Where is the flower? I wanna see, it looks very healthy. <clears throat> anyway, have to take my word for it on that one because I'm not going to uh, go in there. And um, it's a black sapote. We have black sapote fruit still. I've been eating it. It's quite good. People have been coming by here and buying it, getting it. Um, this, this seedling tree has flowers on it. In fact, I can see the flowers from here. I'm gonna go in there to show you. And I was really surprised that my seedling trees all started flowering, but I gave a, a pile manure right there near this mango. And I had given it one right here earlier. 
and maybe it's just the consistency of uh, dropping the, the manure um, near the tree uh, r regularly until they fruit, but also tying the bowl up to the tree. And this looks like it has very, you can see the flowers and the fruit right here. And it has more than that, it has one there. And this tree is a grafted tree, a small, tiny little grafted tree that has produced fruit in the past, but last year it did not. Um, so I don't really see any flowers on this. This is like the only, the only larger jackfruit tree that we have that I don't really see. I don't see flowers on. So I gave it a pile of manure there. Um, I had given it before and I'm going to tie my little bull Romy up to this tree because I may not because it's such a tiny little tree um, that oh it does have flowers on it uh, so all of our jackfruits that are of size there's a fruit right there um, this is a small round red type uh, crunchy um, oh not sure what it is it came from Excalibur but all of our jackfruits are flowering in midwinter it blows my mind um, that we're gonna have so much jackfruit and I'm so excited because now I can really start planting seeds from all the varieties of these jackfruits that I like and uh, the flavor of our fruit is totally different um, than the flavor of other people's fruit that use water. Uh, it's well known that dry farming um, equates to a more uh, flavorful fruit. Um, I've done links to this in the past and uh, our mangoes for sure. So our my favorite mango um, for sure, um, very close. Uh, they were like all very close but the, our, the keys are mango which just blew my mind it was like so good and I see it's flowering and fruiting and doing quite well and this is a Florigon mango that uh, it doesn't even look like it started to uh, swell and for some reason this particular mango did not fruit last year um, which kind of surprised me. Uh, the year before it did lots of fruit. Uh, Kiza, or Florigon's a good producer. It's a good mango, it's just not, I don't, I, I wouldn't put it as a top tier mango, but I definitely would put it in the category of enjoy to eat mango. Um, it just, the flavor is not like really strong. It's, uh, it's a good fiberless mango though. So this is my daily manure I put next to this Garcinia madruno tree. And this tree produces fruit consistently nonstop and uh, more so than Garcinia intermedia, more so than Garcinia brasiliensis, more so than uh, Garcinia gardneriana. And the fruit's about the same quality as the lemon drop mangosteens, but it's bigger. Uh, it's a sour, uh, lemony, not totally sour, but it's a more sour than sweet. And then they have a bumpy lemon that's the Garcinia acuminata, uh, which is a, a sweet version, and it's a round fruit like that. Anyway, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And that's our natural farming, uh, rare tropical fruit trees and midwinter fruit uh, and flower uh, set on our jackfruit and mango trees. I'm really excited to see what these, man these jackfruits and the, what, the, uh, what the mangoes are gonna be like this year because they've been exceptional in the past. Anyway, if you like this content, please uh, like, share, subscribe, and comment, and thanks for watching. Have an excellent day, and have a happy winter solstice.